Hi guys, so welcome back to my channel. So after last week's video about the higher education system in France, I wanted to do something that's a little bit lighter this week. So in this week's video, I'm going to introduce you, or should I say reintroduce you to the French words that you already know. Did you know that there are overall 10,000 English words that were borrowed from French, from which 7,000 is still in use to this day? So the reason behind this is a historical one. After the Norman conquest in 1066, England was ruled by the Normans who spoke a northern form of Old French called Anglo-Norman French. Under their rule, this language gained more and more influence in the administration, law and culture and is still present to this day in the English language. Of course, that doesn't mean that if you can speak English, you can automatically speak French. I wish it worked that way, but even if it doesn't, it can definitely help you with learning French if it is something that you're interested in. So without any further ado, let's see the English words that were borrowed from French. Also, before we start, just please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you want to. Okay, so the first expression is je ne sais quoi. In French, je ne sais quoi literally means I don't know what and according to the dictionary in English it is used to describe a certain quality in someone that you cannot really put into words. For example, he just has this je ne sais quoi. It is used to describe someone who is really attractive, who is really charismatic, who just has something that makes them stand out but you cannot really put into words what it is. You may have already heard the next one in a poll political setting or in the news, carte blanche, which literally means white card or blank card. In English, carte blanche means giving someone free hand to do whatever they want. You may have already heard this one before by watching the news, but it also just means unconditional authority and a complete freedom to act as one wishes. Okay, so the next expression is probably my favorite one, joie de vivre. So in French, it literally means joy of living. In English, you would translate it to something like cheerfulness, an exuberant enjoyment of life. I saw it used in an example like she's admired for her cheerfulness and for her joie de vivre. I'm not quite sure how English speakers pronounce it though. Joie de vivre. Close enough. So the next one is mostly used as an adjective in English, laisser faire. So in French, it literally means let you do. In English, you would translate it to let it be, hands off, leave it alone. And in English, you can also use this expression when describing someone's attitude. So you could use this to describe someone who doesn't get involved in other people's business. And I know that they also use this word in economics, laisser faire in English is a policy of non-interference. So the next one is faux pas. Faux pas literally means false, stop in French. In English, it is mainly used to describe a blunder, a mistake committed in a social setting, something that you're not really supposed to do in a social setting because it goes against the basic manners. So for example, if you blurb on the metro, that's a faux pas. Or when someone is listening to music on speaker on public transportation. That's a faux pas. That's not just a faux pas. That should be banned. I'm pretty sure that you have also heard the next expression as well. In history class, for example, coup d'état. So coup d'état in French literally means strike of state. Coup in French is used to express something that's sudden, something that kind of happens out of the blue. Coup de foudre, coup de coeur, coup de poing. So it is something that happens really unexpectedly. The overthrow of the existing government, usually done by a smaller group. Also FYI, in French, you would write ETA with a capital E and also it has an accent because, because ETA in French means state. Okay, so the next word is fiancé. It has the same exact meaning as in English. It is used to describe someone who is engaged. Also, obviously, fiancé with an E at the end is used to describe a female and fiancé without an E at the end is used to describe a male. Similar to this, we also have divorcé and 
divorcé with an E at the end, which means the same thing in French as well. Someone who is divorced. So the next expression is au pair. I'm pretty sure that you have already heard of this occupation before. And maybe some of you have even worked as an au pair before. So au pair is used to describe a foreign person who helps out with childcare and in the kitchen at a family in exchange for food and allowance. It makes sense because in French au pair literally means equal to. So it just means that the relationship is based on equal terms. Okay, so the next expression is soir or soiree. So soiree in French literally means evening, so the time when the sun sets. And in English it is used to describe a fancy event, a gathering, a party at someone else's house, usually with music and all that kind of fancy stuff that rich people do. So basically it is just a simple party that has a fancier name because it was borrowed from French. <laughs> if you want something to sound fancy, just give it a French name, even if it's like the simplest thing in the world. And last but not least, the last expression is eau de toilette. Eau de toilette in French literally means toilet water, but it is actually a lightly scented cologne used on the skin as a refreshener. Also, fun fact, did you know that the difference between perfume and eau de toilette is the level of concentration of oil in the fragrance? So it makes perfume a little bit stronger because it has a higher level of concentration of oil oil in the fragrance. And yeah, I think this is the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this one. If you're actually thinking about learning French or if you're already learning French, I do have a video about how I'm learning French and also just kind of like my language learning tips and all of that. Also, just again, please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you're new here and also like this video if you enjoyed it. I will see you soon. Bye!